Hey, I'm Matt, producer on The Cave. We just finished the game up recently. Hopefully you've had a chance to play. I decided to head on over to Double Fine and have a talk with the guys that worked on the game. I had a chance to sit down with Dave. We talked animation, design, and of course, sandwiches. Hey, Dave. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Uh, can you tell our fans at home uh, what you do here at Double Fine and I guess specifically what you work on on The Cave? Uh, yeah, my I came to Double Fine as an animator um, and I do I, on each project I do bits of design. On the cave I started as a designer and then moved it back into animation once we kind of got the game mostly fleshed out and then I focused mostly on animation so it was kind of a half and half type thing. So how different is it for you working on the cave? Is it kind of just your next thing or does it stand out in any way? I think the cave stands out. It's The cave is one of my favorite games that I've worked on so far. Um, working with Ron was really cool. Um, I knew of Ron before he even came to work at Double Fine and when it was a really interesting project because I I have to say I'm more inspired by Japanese games as a kid playing Mario, Fast Paced, Ninja Gaiden, games that involve a lot of twitch control and I wasn't a big adventure game player when I was a kid so coming onto the cave and getting to kind of tease Ron about adventure games and why I didn't play them when I was a kid and then to actually learn so much more about them through him and at Double Fine was really exciting and then to like sort of merge those two elements of design, adventure games and then like twitchy, fast-paced Japanese games. It's really fun to sort of mix and match those two. I think you can notice some of that stuff in the cave too, the way that um, playing characters jumping around in the game, you, you know, like how, how the characters feel kind of feels like jumping around in, in a Japanese game, but then the puzzles are very adventure gamey and mm -hmm. stuff. Like that. Was there something that really challenged you? Was there maybe a character or, uh, or just something in the cave that was really, it took you a while to get your head wrapped around it? I think initially at being able to add character to seven characters that don't speak was our first big challenge. Um, and Elliot Roberts is, he was the animation lead on this project and he did an animation on the night that was the night kind of like nervously sitting there um, for one of his idols and he was just experiment like that's some pent up stuff that he had in him where he was like oh I want to do this you know I just see this night animating like this and everybody kind of we all responded to that and that was kind of like look in the walk cycles and the way that these characters run and the way that they stand there like let's amp up, like let's do over the top um, character in each one of those animations because that's what's reading, that's like, that's making these characters seem like there's more than just, you know, this little guy running around, like it's, a, it's an actual person and we can really see the attitude of that character just from the way that they're running and standing there and breathing. And that was probably our biggest challenge was, was showing that and jumping over that hurdle was like the best thing for us. And does that go with environment art and things like that? Did you pull from that as well and say, oh, well, the hillbilly's definitely gonna have this element to him because look at where, you know, yeah. look at where he's from. And Yeah, well, always like you see uh, an environment artist will start modeling props and environment pieces and then we bring those into files that we animate and then put into the game. Um, and you'll see them add funny, like they add so many funny little details to like simple props. And then when you see those, that really inspires you. You're like, oh, that would be super funny if when you hit the switch, the clown's eyes, you know, rotate. So then either I'll go to a prop artist and be like, can we rig that so the eyes will rotate? Or I'll just go in there and add those things. So a lot of times it's like, they're creating all this funny stuff that once like it's just going to be static in the background but then that inspires us to change our animations and to like add different things to it so it's always kind of a back and forth thing i hope it's a back and forth thing right now it's i'm i see props and i'm like that's awesome i want to animate that so hopefully it's a vice versa thing right uh di how difficult was it kind of stopping because it sounds like from everybody that it was this great process of letting all this out and building and building how difficult is it with a game like this to just kind of, you know, we obviously we've talked about it started with so many characters from Ron's original concept and then is down to seven that are kind of the favorites. How hard was it not to be like, can't we put in one more or two more or another well, level? Well, you start, like I was saying, as, as being, an, in a, as, as a designer at the beginning of the project, I'm like, yeah, let's put in this character. Let's have this happen. Let's do all that. But then also being an animator, 
where once I've come up with things or I've, you know, once we were like, yeah, let's try that, then I'm the guy that has to add all that work. After about a few months of doing that, you start going like, um, let's, yeah, I like that idea of seven carat. Like, let's, how about six? Like, where would we cut that down a little bit? So there's like a very, you know, like, you, you start creating assets and doing all the work for it. You know, there's like this like gray area where you kind of get to and you're like, I think this is going to be a good run. You kind of like try to, try to, try to not put too much work to do so that you can make the work that you have to do really good. Because a lot of times if there's too much, as an, as an art creator, you're like, I really would like to add all this character, I'd really like to add all this extra flourish, but I just don't have the time to do it because there's so much. So um, you kind of just get into this, this experience mode where it's like you want to add exactly enough to make it really deep, but not so much that you can't make all that deep stuff really beautiful and really pretty and really good and like the next level of, of quality that from the last thing you worked on. If the cave were a sandwich, what kind of sandwich would you Okay, if the cave was a sandwich, I think it would have, it would be on Dutch crunch because that kind of looks like rocky bread. Um, there would be sprouts in it because there's a lot of things going on and there's like sprouts are always a tangled mess. Um, there would be that type of meat that I think is ham, but it looks really dry so you can't really tell what type of meat it is. So you're curious and um, I do not like the Dijon mustard I like regular mustard, but it would have Dijon mustard because there's a lot of seeds in that, and I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things that can happen in the game, like seed. I don't I don't know. It'd be some type of it'd be an Artur sandwich on Dutch Crunch with sprouts, dry ham, and a couple other things. And then maybe something you didn't necessarily order for the sandwich. But there would it's be in there. there would be some onions in there hidden that you weren't expecting. Okay, grilled or raw. They're raw, they're raw because they're very crisp. Good. Crispness, essential it's for the an adventure It's the crispness, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right.